Hey you guys, this is Josh with Homesteading Family. We have got a beautiful sunny day here today. It's actually warmed up a little bit and allowing us to get some work done after some pretty cold weather, hard freezes, a little bit of snow. This is all really early for us and uh, we're feeling like maybe winter is going to set in a little bit early. So we want to get our garden tucked in and ready for the winter sleep and also prepped for spring so that when things warm up, um, it's all ready to go for us. So there's several things in tucking in your garden that I wanna recommend that you do. Now, I'm speaking specifically to a no-till garden and for us, we're just establishing these beds. So I'm doing a few things here that I wouldn't do every year in an established garden because this needs more inputs. When we got here, the soil was compact, lifeless, with very little organic matter. Yeah, we put a lot into it this last year, but it still needs uh, more than just half or one inch of compost, which is what you might do on a regular year after a growing season. Ours needs a little bit more than that. But these basic, basic principles that I'm gonna share with you today, you can apply to your garden in a no-till fashion. If you are still farming conventionally, I'd really encourage you to research no-till. Um, I've got a few videos on it myself here on the YouTube channel. Uh, there's tons of information out there. It's just way, way more sustainable and healthy for your soil. Now there's several things we wanna to do to prep the garden. Obviously we wanna finish our harvest. We wanna remove all of the plant material. We wanna add our amendments and we want to cover the soil, put a blanket on her, okay? So harvesting is basically done. We have removed all of the plant material and by in doing that, We've done that by cutting down the plants at the roots, not pulling them up, not disrupting the soil and not pulling out that root structure. Those remaining root structures, they're gonna die in the soil if they're an annual plant and they're gonna break down and they're gonna feed the biology in your soil, the life in your soil. They're gonna add carbon to your soil and um, organic matter that you, at levels that you can't reach with a tiller, with anything. And so we cut it down and leave it just flush with the surface and we take all of that matter and we will chip and shred it to add back to our garden. Once that's done, for this year particularly, we are pulling aside the mulch where we need to and we are adding compost. We, even after adding nearly 20 cubic yards of soil to this garden in the spring, it is still lacking in organic matter and is really lacking in organic life. Um, we did some tests on it. There's average levels of bacteria. There's almost no fungus and there's almost no worms and nematodes and protozoa and the whole host of life that you need to function as a system in your soil. So we've got to keep adding to that. Primarily the way we are going to do that is by adding another two to three inches of compost on the top to the soil now on these beds. After we've reshaped them, they, they, you, you want to, um, at least I want to, I want to have all my rows straight and clean, able to take a wheelbarrow down them in the spring, um, everything nice and straight so that when we go to plant in the spring, it's all ready. So uh, you'll see out here in a few minutes, we've got our string lines, we're shaping up the beds. We'll then add our compost to it. And then we are going to add mulch on top of that as a blanket to put her to bed. Um, get the best compost that you can get. And if you can't do compost in mulch, do the best compost you can, layer that on top and leave it. And that's great. If you can afford it or you've got the resources and materials, I really want to encourage you to mulch your beds heavily, lay a blanket down on top of them, anywhere from two to six inches thick. Uh, that and that's dry. That's all gonna. That's all gonna settle down a little bit over the course of the winter. But you want to cover that soil up. That protects it. That insulates it. That helps you hold moisture. And 
This layering also helps suppress your weeds. There are always weed seeds in the garden and you'll find as you, if you're doing a no-till, as you remove the weeds and as you layer up and you don't disturb the soil, you're not bringing those weed seeds up and you're gonna have fewer and fewer weeds over time. So another benefit of the mulching. So there's a few basic kinds of mulch that most of us have access to one or the other out there and you can make your own, which is really the best way to go. So I'm gonna cover a few different types that we have access to and um, hopefully somewhere in your area you have access to as well. If not, you can make your own. Okay, different types of mulch. This is a hay mulch, straw most people are a little more familiar with. Um, but we got a whole lot of this for free, and so I really, really like that. We had a lot of ground to cover, and in our area there's quite a bit of hay grown and straw, and um, this can be a really great mulch. It, it makes a great mat, it's great at suppressing weeds, and it's a wonderful cover. Uh, things to watch out for if you're buying mulch, uh, you really want no spray. That, if you're buying uh, a hay or a straw mulch, you really gotta watch out for the chemicals in that. And that can be very tough to avoid in a lot of places. So it's not at the top of my list. Um, hay ground isn't really the most healthy and I really don't think there's a lot of nutrition in here either. Um, but we got to work with the resources we had. Like I said, I had this for free, so we mulched this whole garden over this year with it, and we're using up the last of it now. And we're moving on to another resource we have that makes a uh, great mulch as well. All right, in this bed, we have a wood shavings. Um, these actually come from a local cabinet shop. And this is just uh, mostly maple. Uh, wood shavings. The thing I love about this is it's organic. It is just clean and it's about as clean as you're going to get except for making it yourself. And uh, it's a wood byproduct. I think there's a little bit, little bit more nutrient in here. And uh, this might be hard for you to find. You can buy it in a lot of places in bales, but that's not a very cost effective option unless you're uh, gardening a real small plot of ground. Um, but nonetheless, uh, this can be a great mulch if, if, if it's uh, somewhere that you can get access to it. And um, one thing you might find is look for arborists in your area that are um, cutting down trees and chipping them up. That is a little different than this because this is just wood shavings, but that's even better. And I'll show you my homemade mulch here that's going to resemble a little bit more of what you might be able to find from a tree company. So this is mulch we've made ourselves. It's got a little bit of the hay in it still because we were chipping it and piling it on, on top of our last mulch pile. But this is just a homemade mulch. And um, this is about as good as it's gonna get because I know it's organic. I'm using what I have on site. And it also has a diversity of materials in it which is just great. That's just great for the soil. That's great for encouraging different bacterial and fungal life in your soil that you need. And um, if, you can't, if you can't make something like this at home, one of the best things you can do is to find a tree company in your area. And especially if you're in an urban area or more densely populated, there's usually a lot of those. We don't have many around here. Um, like I said, we've got other good resources and straw and hay and and uh, wood shavings. We don't have uh, a lot of the companies running around with the big trucks, but a lot of times, if you can find them, uh, they will come and deliver it to your site free of charge and dump it for you. And the great thing about that material is you're pretty sure it's pretty organic. It's just tree trimmings and tree clippings, and I love it because it have all the parts of the tree in it. It's not just the wood, like the wood chips over here. Those are great, they're useful. Uh, 
but they are just the inside of the wood. They're just the wood. There's no bark, there's no leaves, there's no diversity. And so when you get those tree trimmings from a company, uh, they've got everything in it. And that is a fantastic mulch and can make a fantastic compost as well. And you can be pretty assured that it's uh, clean and safe for your garden. And if you can, and if you are gardening for, seriously gardening to produce for yourself, it is worth the investment in a chipper shredder uh, where you can make your own mulch, where you can, you can shred leaves in it, you can shred cardboard, you can shred a newspaper, which all of those are acceptable in organic gardening. The, the soil biology is going to break down uh, any of the materials in there as long as you remove any of the plastics from the cardboard and you don't use the waxy paper or the glossy paper. You, you don't want to use that, but regular newspaper is great. Um, your leaves from your yard, uh, your garden waste, all your tree trimmings, you can make your own compost and mulch with that. And that is a wonderful, wonderful product. And that is our long-term goal here. We have a large space and we're just getting started this year making our own, but the long-term goal is to just recycle uh, all of the tree waste and plant waste and uh, any cardboard, anything like that, that we have on site and use that to mulch our garden. So if you're gonna make your own mulch at home, having a uh, chipper shredder is an excellent, excellent tool. And there's a lot of them out there, but we got a hold of this BCS this year. And uh, what we really like about it, it's, it's got a great chipper, good shredder, uh, but this is a two-wheel tractor that uh, changes out implements and can do a whole lot of work on your small farm. This is just a great, great tool for um, working your garden, for making good use of all the debris around your property and turning it into compost and mulch. Uh, we're gonna be trying this out as a snowblower this winter, and uh, it's got a whole bunch of other implements. But um, this machine or something like it is really essential to making your own compost, uh, particularly your own mulch, and um, man, you can just make a use of so many things on your property. If your neighbors have trimmings, leaves, all of that you can use and break down with this machine to make your own mulch, which I'd highly, highly recommend. You can see here a little bit of what we've got. This has got everything in it from garden materials to tree trimmings to cardboard, newspaper. It's got it all in there and we'll just mulch with this. It'll be great. Well, that's it guys, there's uh, three done. Oh, 
12 to go. But uh, these beds are all uh, tucked in and you can see we got a variety of materials here. Mostly we're gonna finish it with the uh, wood shavings because that's what we have a whole lot of. And again, long-term plan is to just develop the ability to chip and shred our own mulch and our own compost and just recycle everything on site. We will have more than enough material uh, once we get going. And if you have established beds and you've got good soil, you don't need as much as we're putting on. I, I'm putting on a lot of compost right now to bring this soil up to par. You should be able to apply a half inch to an inch of a good quality compost. Um, or even just taking down the broken down tree materials that's starting to compost. Uh, at one point I had a source where they were just shredding the bark, the leaves, the smaller uh, woody materials and letting it sit for a year. And so it was kind of halfway between a compost and a mulch. And we just top dressed with that and it was fantastic. That's the long-term goal here. One dressing a year, uh, about an inch. You to tuck your garden in for the winter. Don't leave the soil bare. Don't leave all your material there to deal with in the spring. Get it all done now. Give your garden some love. And when it starts to warm up before you're even outside all the little critters in the soil under there are going to go to work for you and uh, it'll be all ready for you to plant in the spring so that's about it for today i got to get out here and uh, clean up this last row plant some garlic and get inside for pizza and a movie see you soon hey one thing i forgot if you are tilling and you mulch your beds like this, do not till the mulch in. It is too much carbon without enough nitrogen. This is a blanket for the winter. Some of it's gonna stay here. Some of it's gonna move to the side when we plant in the spring, but do not plan to turn this in. You can have too much carbon, too much organic material in your soil and uh, if you turn this in, it will definitely give you too much carbon and uh, you'll have a problem for a while getting your nitrogen levels up.